The hatchery at the poultry unit within the Dairy Research Institute in Naivasha runs throughout the week. This unit falls under the oversight of the Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization, CALRO. A key goal here is to boost food security. Our major work is to produce and do research on chicken and produce multiple numbers of chicken for dissemination in different parts of the country. Lois Waidaka and her son James Waidaka live in North Kinangop. They are beneficiaries of Carlos chicken multiplication technology. We have really gotten money from that because uh, out of the sale of eggs and also chicken for meat and uh, it has been profitable. We cannot complain. The Waidakas have been raising the cargo improved indigenous chicken for more than two years. They simply drive to the center, pick and live with the chicks of their choice. However, prior to their arrival, what happens behind the scenes to ensure an endless count of eggs and subsequent chicks is labor intensive. Caged in this building are 240 birds. They are confined here for three months. The hens are brought here when they start laying. Yes. On one side, the birds are black and white spotted. On the other, black. These are different breed lines that have been developed and refined over time. These cocks have been trained to, to give semen. It is not what they do naturally. And for the cocks to be trained efficiently, they should not have mounted a hen in the past. And their collection is done. There's a unique identification number on the cock and uh, this will be marked on the eggs which are, are laid based on the semen that we have picked. If the hen is not laying then it is not interested in, in taking semen and once we have inseminated uh, then for the next five or, or six days all the eggs which the hen produces will be fertile and that is to say we don't need to inseminate this specific hen every day. This technology is not really meant for smallholder farmers, it is meant uh, for mostly breeding interventions or, or, or large scale systems where you have got a cock that is of very good value and you fear losing it or so forth and will want to get genetic resources. The cargo indigenous chicken has been improved in a number of characteristics. It grows very fast. Within five months it is mature. With a weight of well, females having 1.8 kg and males having 2 kg. They are more resistant to diseases. The hens will give you between 200 and 30 to 250 eggs in one year. It's a dual purpose breed line and they start laying at four and a half, four and a half months and that is because of the long-term work we have done. The breeder flock laying eggs is 5,000. Once these eggs have been laid, they have potential to hatch. The eggs are collected four times a day, at 10 a.m., noon, 3 and 4 p.m. The frequent collection minimizes dirt and damage to the shells. Broken or cracked eggs are sifted out. The rest are taken to the egg storage room in the hatchery. Biosecurity measures are observed. This unit handles 4,000 eggs per, per day. We keep the eggs for a conducive temperature of 18 to 21 degrees Celsius for the, a period of five days. This stabilizes the embryos in readiness for incubation. If the eggs are to be stored for more than five days, the temperature is reduced to 16 degrees Celsius. Before being taken to the pre-warming chamber, the eggs are trolled for disinfection by fumigation. Formalin and potassium permanganate are used in the process. After 40 minutes, at a temperature between 24 to 38 degrees Celsius, microorganisms are destroyed. It takes 21 days for the chicks to hatch. We have got the first section of 18 days, that is in the setter, and the last three days, which is in the, the hatcher. The eggs are handled according to their origin, the flock houses they came from. So, for 18 days, the eggs will be inside this chamber that can swallow 38,000 eggs. 
to do a multi-stage system of incubation. So we put the eggs in bits. In respect to the hatcher. So at every given time, we normally load a machine with 19,200 eggs. That's the same capacity we have with our hatcher. Once the eggs are loaded, the temperature in the compartment is set to 100.2 degrees Fahrenheit. The humidity at 55% and the carbon percentage at 0.04. The incubation time begins at day zero. When the eggs are ready for transfer to the hatcher, the time on this digital monitor will be reading day 18. A candling machine is used to assess embryo development. A strong light source beams from underneath the eggs. Other lights in the room are switched off. The examiner easily identifies infertile eggs and those with dead embryos. On this tray, you can see the eggs that are transparent. The lights can pass through. They want to show that they are there is no embryo that developed inside. The eggs were not fertile. But we have got an egg that's showing black inside. This shows that the egg had an embryo but it died during the, during the mid stages. Then the one that can, cannot pass the light, that one has a live embryo inside it. And suitable eggs are removed. What is remaining here does not show that it will get all 800%. There are some lots that you will get not more than 10 percent. Eggs that are likely to produce quality chicks are packed in readiness for the hatcher. The eggs are kept in the hatcher basket. So it's easy for the chicks to come out and stay in that tray waiting for harvesting. This is where the final three-day stage takes place. In this machine, the temperature will be lower than the, the ones from the, the setter because already the embryo is producing heat that can protect itself. Over 15,000 chicks have hatched. Separation from the shells consumes some considerable time. The newly hatched chicks have to be vaccinated. When they are hatched on day one, we give them a set of vaccination. The first one is Marek's vaccine. We also give them infectious bronchitis vaccine. We also vaccinate them against Gumboro. There are two stages. The first is by use of injections either through a mechanized system or manually. Each chick is getting 0.2 ml. That's supposed to vaccinate it within one hour. After one hour, the vaccine will be expired. So we have to be very fast. This tedious routine takes about four hours. It paves way for the second phase, which involves spraying. We vaccinate against the Newcastle plus infectious bronchitis. That will cover the bud up to 10 days. Then the farmer will boost it again with the Newcastle without infected bronchitis until day, day 21. Clients who desire one day old chicks would collect them right after vaccination. If there are no orders placed for one day old chicks, then the chicks are taken to their first home, the brooder house. Before they are placed, we have to make everything to be in place, the feeds, the water rats, to make sure that the wood shaving is well distributed and to make sure that the space is enough for, to accommodate the chicks that are coming from the hatchery. Either gas or electricity are used to regulate the temperatures within the brooders. This is considered the most critical and energy sapping stage in the development of poultry production. The instincts of the chicks are enticed by the chick mash and they begin pecking. They will be here for eight weeks and for eight weeks they will be feeding on chick mash. Then from eight weeks they will be shifted to grower's house and they will start feeding on grower's mash from the ninth week to nineteenth week. Once an egg is seen, then we shift to, to layers mash. In the meantime, chicken farmers from different parts of the country will be on the lookout for the chicken edge they want. As Calro improved indigenous hens and roosters dot the homesteads of innumerable farmers across the country, the rigorous work that went into their hatching may keep slipping by unnoticed.